The following is an informational program from the Sangamon County Circuit Clerk's Office. The information contained in this program is solely for the use of the people of Sangamon County to make them more aware of the services of the Circuit Clerk's Office. The employees of the Circuit Clerk's Office cannot give legal advice. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Circuit Clerk Presents. My name is Paul Palazzolo, your Sangamon County Circuit Clerk, and we're here in the studios of the Capital Area Career Center. And we want to thank those folks at the Career Center for allowing us to use these studios and the students who are helping us uh, videotape this for you this afternoon. As I said, my name is Paul Palazzolo, your Sangamon County Circuit Clerk, and today's program is on court supervision. And we have two great people who are with us to help outline court supervision for you and some, uh, hopefully some questions that you might have in your mind about what court supervision is and how it might affect you should you happen to get a traffic violation. And with us today, we've got Ryan Vaughn. He is the manager of the traffic division in the Sangamon County Circuit Clerk's Office and John Sharp. John is an attorney with Sharp and Harmon Law Office and he's in Springfield. So with Ryan and John's help, we're gonna ask some questions to them and hopefully be able to help clarify the topic of court supervision for you during the program. So let's start with Ryan. And our first question, Ryan, what is court supervision? Uh, court supervision uh, is essentially a, a sentence that you can receive on any number of different traffic, uh, DUI, conservation, or even criminal misdemeanor uh, offenses. And it, it's essentially it means that um, the, the charge will not be reported externally as a conviction. Uh, rather, it is literally reported as that the court has withheld judgment uh, on your behalf. Uh, and when we report, it's reported to several external agencies uh, as court supervision, again, rather than a conviction. Okay. Uh, so uh, what are the benefits, John, of court supervision for a traffic ticket that I have received as a citizen? The biggest benefit is you avoid having that conviction go on your record. The conviction will oftentimes trigger nasty things to happen from your insurance company, your rates can go up. Uh, the conviction can also have other uh, impact on your driving record. If you would receive, for example, three moving violations within a 12 month period, you could have your driver's license suspended. So court supervision keeps that conviction from being placed on your record. It is something though that Supervision isn't a cure-all because there are certain circumstances where getting court supervision will still trigger your license getting suspended. And one of the things that Ryan and I have spoken about in several instances over probably the last year and a half are people who get caught who are underage for the illegal possession or consumption of alcohol. And even if they receive supervision from the court on that offense, those are automatically reported to Secretary of State. And Secretary of State will then suspend the person's driver's license even though they did receive court supervision. So it's not a cure-all. It also doesn't really help people with CDL licenses, but I think we may be talking about that a little bit later. Okay, cool. Well, then, Let's say I've got a traffic ticket sure. as, a, as, a, as a citizen, driving along, receive that, that traffic ticket because I've uh, not done something according to the law. How do I then get court supervision as has been outlined by you both? Sure. Well, first step is to go to court. Um, in Sangamon County currently, to receive court supervision, um, you have to show up in court. Uh, when you do, uh, one of our clerks from the circuit clerk's office will uh, check you in electronically. It's all very streamlined, all very quick. Uh, you'll have a seat in the courtroom, um, and then shortly thereafter, uh, the judge will uh, begin calling people up to the bench one by one. And at that time, he or she will look to the state's attorney in the room uh, and ask if they have an offer. Uh, and that's the time when court supervision is normally offered. Um, and at that point, uh, it's, it's really as simple as uh, you either, you know, you accepting it, uh, you sign your guilty plea, um, and you can go on about your day. Your day in court is done at that point. And so how much does that court supervision cost if I'm there in the courtroom? Well, 
It varies on several things. Um, it varies on similar things uh, that will determine whether or not you're even offered court supervision, like uh, your driving record, uh, your case history at the county. Um, but generally speaking, it starts at about $240 currently. Uh, that amount is always subject to change. Uh, if the General Assembly ever tax on new fees, the amount has to go up. Uh, but for the most part, uh, you can get in and, in and out for about $240 with court supervision. So the, the basis of what the court supervision fees are, those are all set by the Illinois General Assembly and the, those are tacked on as, as they find new things uh, to, to pay for uh, in, in the state of Illinois. That's correct. As well as Sangamon County. That's correct. They are all set by um, Illinois compiled statutes and those will change from year to year, usually going effective in January, but often going effective on July 1st of any given year as well. What kind of fees are uh, included in that court supervision cost? Uh, the court supervision fee has, well, for example, a, a fee that goes to the circuit clerk. Uh, there's uh, a fee that goes to a, a document storage fund uh, for aiding and storing files, for a court automation fund um, uh, to do things like uh, automated uh, electronic traffic courts. Um, there are also fees that go to a police vehicle fund for the maintenance of police vehicles. Uh, a fund that goes to court security for keeping the building safe and, uh, and making sure that nobody's uh, getting in with uh, any kind of dangerous materials and various other funds that go to child advocacy uh, and, uh, and uh, victims of domestic violence and victims of other crimes as well. Okay, so it's not just strictly county fees that are included in there. There's other things that, that are being covered out of that, out of that. Supervision. That's cost. correct, and a chunk of every uh, court supervision fee also goes to the agency that wrote the violation. Okay, okay. So, uh, John, as I've uh, gone to court, received supervision, uh, how, how many days or months is that supervision window? And then what if I get another traffic ticket in that window? Do I lose my supervision? What, what does that all mean? Normally, the period of supervision, if someone can pay the ticket, that day, the period of supervision will be 30 days. If they need a little bit of time to pay, our judges are very good about giving people time. But if you need a month to get it paid, your supervision period is usually going to be 60 days. If you need two months to get it paid, your supervision period will be 90 days. Those things tend to change if you're talking about things like DUIs, where supervision periods can be anywhere from one year to two years. On some misdemeanor charges, supervision can be anywhere from six months up to a year or two years. The um, primary thing that you have to be concerned about when you have supervision is you have to do what the court orders you to do. Number one, you have to pay your fines. If there's anything in addition that the court's told you to do, you have to do that. If you neglect to pay your fines on a traffic ticket, then the court can withdraw that supervision and notify Secretary of State of unpaid fines, which could lead to your license getting suspended. If you receive supervision on a misdemeanor or on a DUI citation, and you neglect to do everything the court told you to do, then the state's attorney will file a petition to revoke your supervision. And if they do revoke your supervision, you can be resentenced to whatever up to whatever the maximum potential is for that charge at the time you originally pled guilty, which in a case of a DUI, for example, would be up to 364 days in the county jail and up to a $2,500 fine or both. Um, can you get supervision more than once? On traffic tickets, you can get supervision by statute. You can get it up to two times per year. But you have to be very cautious because judges don't necessarily like to see people in a frequent flyer program. So they, uh, if you came in to request a second supervision, you may encounter a higher fine. The state's attorney may insist on a higher fine. If you came in looking for supervision and you had just had it within the last 60 days or 90 days, or maybe you were still on supervision and you come in to get it again, you may find a state's attorney rather reluctant to offer supervision, and you may have to do what would be called an open plea to request it from the court. So it's, it's something that's very beneficial, but you can also screw it up if you're not paying attention. Sure. So, so, so. supervision is not just a casual way uh, that a citizen who can uh, you know, just have those 
uh, things relieved from their record. It's a very serious way uh, to uh, continue obeying the law once you might have just had a uh, just a small infraction or, or something that might something that might not happen to you every day. It's something that for your average speeding ticket, I think it is kind of a casual thing. People know about it in the community and they understand they can get it. But it's something that they always have to remember to follow through and remember to pay their fine and do sure. the things they're supposed to, or it can turn into a real problem for you. There are some obligations that accompany Absolutely. Uh, the privilege of supervision. And just to piggyback on that for a second, sure. there are actually some offenses to sort of highlight the privilege that court supervision really is where the state's attorney typically will not offer That's supervision right. because of their comfort level with the type of offense. Okay. Uh, and uh, most people are pretty well aware of what those are, but uh, there's, there's a few where um, you know, the speed is too high or something went really wrong and there was an accident uh, uh, in, involving some serious injury where supervision won't be offered. So it's contingent upon uh, Joe and Jane Citizen to make sure that they're following through on their end of the sure. bargain to keep it. Well, now, Ryan, I think John may have alluded to it. Do I have to uh, pay that right away, the supervision, or do I have some time? No, you don't have to. Paying it right away the same day will get you the shortest length of time, 30 days of court supervision. Mm -hmm. But like John said, uh, the judges understand that uh, you may not have come with the, the, the full uh, amount on that day, and so they'll give you time to pay. Generally speaking, within a reasonable time frame, you can't ask for two years. Um, but uh, the supervision length of time will extend generally one month beyond the time that you need to pay. And it really is, it's going to be a question put to you. So mm -hmm. uh, you just kind of expect it to give them a reasonable amount of time that you know you can pay it in. So, well, yeah. there's, if I may, there's, there's one other thing, and Ryan hit on this. Not only are there some things that the state's attorney may be hesitant to offer supervision on, but there's actually one thing that is very prominent the state legislature said you cannot receive supervision on, and that's passing a school bus that is either loading or unloading. And we see those kind of tickets coming through a lot. And if a person pleads guilty to that offense, they get their license suspended. And you cannot receive court supervision for that offense. It's, it's prohibited. You can't, you can't do it. And our state's attorney will not offer supervision for that. So if you pass a school bus that is loading or unloading, if the stop arm is out and you pass that school bus, if an officer sees you and you get ticketed, you run a very good likelihood of having your driver's license suspended. I think that's a very important point for the folks that are watching because they may not even realize the seriousness of that violation. Most people don't, not until it happens to them. And I think a lot of right. people believe that because there may not have been an officer around that that means that I got away with it and that is absolutely mm -hmm. not true. And like John said, we see dozens of these tickets come through uh, and the people that get them uh, are really in a bad position because it is essentially going to be an instant suspension. Well, there has been a lot of excellent information uh, up to this break. And so uh, after the break, uh, we might get into some specific cases of, of traffic violation uh, and how court supervision would apply to those. Uh, but thank you both okay. very, very much for the information up to this point that I think has been extremely positive for those who are watching. We're going to take a short break, but in the meantime, please uh, continue to joining us for Circuit Clerk Presents on this particular topic of court supervision. Look around, the changes catch your eye, and you come to realize one can make a difference. Since 1915, Kiwanis International has touched millions of lives. When you help one child, you help the world. But one can make a difference. Welcome back from the break, ladies and gentlemen. And again, this is Circuit Clerk Presents. My name's Paul Palazzolo, your Sangamon County Circuit Clerk. And our guests today, again, are Ryan Vaughn, uh, Traffic Division Manager in the Sangamon County Circuit Clerk's Office, and John Sharp, an attorney with Sharp and Harmon Law Office right here in Springfield, Illinois. And again, we're at the Capital Area Career Center with the students uh, helping us bring this program to you. We've had some very informative comments coming in on the topic of court supervision from our guests. And we're going to get into some specific questions, particularly on court supervision in specific cases. Uh, Ryan, I have a commercial driver's license. Does court supervision help me? Uh, it's a tricky one. 
Uh, with a commercial driver's license, uh, it's one of the only situations where uh, an act called the Federal Motor Carrier Act actually takes precedence rather than state law over your driver's license. Um, and there are different outcomes that can happen for moving violations for CDL drivers. Generally speaking, um, the CDL drivers want to avoid convictions uh, on moving violations of any kind. Uh, this might actually be a really good one for John to answer in terms of uh, uh, what a CDL driver needs to do when they're facing uh, some sort of moving violation traffic offense. Okay, John? CDL drivers find themselves in a very unique situation because of the type of equipment that they're handling. The Federal Motor Carrier Act is designed to, number one, look out for safety on our interstate highways and safety by those who are entrusted to handle these big types of, of vehicles. Therefore, the rules can be really stringent. If a CDL carrier gets a speeding citation and it is greater than 10 miles an hour over the limit, if they plead to that citation, it can trigger all types of ramifications for their license. If it's under 10 miles an hour over the limit, or if you can get the state's attorney to amend it to under 10 miles an hour over the limit, then they don't have those ramifications for their license. CDL license holders face a lengthy list of other problems when it comes to if they would receive a DUI citation. It doesn't just apply if they're in the semi or in the vehicle that requires a CDL, but even if they get a DUI charge while they're in their personal vehicle, they can still have their CDL disqualified, which is actually worse than being suspended because if your license is disqualified, you can't get that license back at the end of a suspension period. So for a CDL driver, if they're looking at supervision, they would be well advised to talk to an attorney. In fact, we have places from around the country, one out of Oklahoma City, there's another one out of Michigan. They contact our office all the time because they represent drivers from all over the country and they'll pass through this area and they'll get a citation. Uh, there's overweight citations, there's all types of different things that can affect a CDL license. If I'm a citizen with a DUI offense, what are the benefits of court supervision? If you if you have a CDL license, or just in general, just if if you receive a DUI, the benefit is if you don't receive supervision, they revoke your driver's license. As soon as you would enter into the plea, if you did not receive supervision, then the circuit clerk's office is mandated to notify Secretary of State as they are of any conviction. Once Secretary of State learns of the conviction for a DUI charge, that triggers a revocation from the Secretary of State's office. And one of the strangest things that can happen is if you're on vacation and if you pick up a DUI in another state, because you're an Illinois licensed driver, the, there's a thing called the Interstate Licensing Compact Agreement where if you get picked up, for example, in Missouri, you go down for the weekend to St. Louis and you get picked up for a DUI down there, your DUI will be reported back to the Illinois Secretary of State. And because you received an out-of-state DUI citation, you will get your license revoked. Because that state will not have a supervision program comparable to Illinois. And the only way to avoid getting a revocation is if you have a supervision program that is exactly like Illinois. Sure. And no one else does. Now, what if I violate the conditions of my DUI supervision. Then the, the state's attorney in all likelihood would file a petition to revoke your supervision and you would have to once again appear in front of the judge, explain to the judge whatever the violation is that they've alleged, what happened. Normally it's that you haven't paid your fines or you haven't completed your classes and if you have a very good reason the judge may grant you some additional time to be able to get those things done. But if you don't and you lose your supervision, then you will have a conviction go on your record, your license will be revoked, and that's at a minimum. You could also face jail time. That's, and that would be part of the reasons why we... That's why you want to make sure that you get supervision and you take it seriously. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Ryan, uh, if I'm under the age of 21, 
on the graduated driver's license, mm -hmm. can I still get corp supervision and, and are there any extra requirements? Uh, sure. Uh, yes, you can and yes, there are extra requirements. And this is a really important one. We see uh, a lot of situations where a, um, a kid gets a ticket and maybe trying to hide it from their parents just comes in and pays it. Uh, we also see an equal number of situations where the parent just comes in and pays it because they're a little unaware of something that we refer to as the 2 and 24 rule. Uh, whereas an over 21 motorist, as John was mentioning, uh, can get three moving violations in a 12-month period before they're suspended, someone on the GDL is a little bit different. Uh, they're going to uh, only be allowed to get two moving violation convictions in a 24-month period, so in two years, and they can be suspended. And in addition, their graduated driver's license restrictions can be extended. Um, so, you know, under 21 drivers really need to come to court. Um, if they do get court supervision uh, under Illinois law, they are required to also take uh, a four-hour driver safety course. Okay. Uh, uh, and that can be uh, taken uh, in person and uh, pretty soon I think it's actually going to be available online as well. Once they complete that, they send it to the clerk's office uh, and that's the additional requirement of court supervision that they face. What does the circuit clerk's office play in that role? I know what that does, but help sure, explain to you. Sure, sure. Well, and, and it's essentially the same in, in almost all court supervision. When we, uh, when the court orders us to enter court supervision on the record, uh, we use a specific three-digit code uh, that will send it to the Secretary of State uh, as court supervision rather than a conviction, and that's a very important thing uh, and, uh, because it will send it to the private driving record of the person. Most people don't know that at the Secretary of State you actually have two driving records. Uh, one is public and one is private. And the most important thing about private, I would say, and the reason most citizens show up for court supervision is because uh, insurance companies can't see it. Uh, it's for the driver's eyes only. Uh, and putting it in as the three-digit code that corresponds to court supervision directs it to that side of the driving record uh, so that, again, it's only for the driver to see. One thing sure. to follow up what uh, Ryan was talking about, in Sangamon County, if you're 16 and you get a moving violation, our judges are pretty... Uh, pretty careful to make sure that you have a parent or a guardian come to court with you. So if you get that ticket and you don't necessarily want mom or dad to know about it and grandma and grandpa aren't available, you're going to have a problem if you go to court. Mm -hmm. So it, the judges want to make sure the parents are aware of what's going on and make sure that uh, you know we don't have those situations where people are putting their graduated driver's licenses at risk. Now, with supervision, John, is that possible in a uh, criminal misdemeanor charge? Is that... Uh... Yes. You can get supervision on criminal misdemeanors. Um, supervision works pretty much the same way. The only exception might be if it's a reporting type of supervision, they'll actually fill, the state's attorney will actually prepare a formal supervision order, and you may be required to report at least one time to our adult probation office. Okay. And that's what happens with situations involving DUIs, with some other types of criminal misdemeanors like thefts, retail thefts, things like that. Now, Ryan, if you would kind of outline a little bit about what mail-in supervision offered through uh, the Sangamon County Circuit Clerk's Office is going to be entailing as we look into the calendar year of 2016. Sure. Uh, so pretty soon, we uh, effective hopefully January 1 of 2016, uh, we're going to be launching a mail-in supervision program uh, really for the convenience of the, the average driver who doesn't necessarily have the time to take off from work, uh, come up to the, uh, to the county building uh, and sit in court for an indeterminate amount of time. Um, it'll be a, a relatively uh, simple process of, of filling out a form that you'll be given by the officer, uh, sending that in with the form of payment. Um, after that, the state's attorney's office will review uh, everybody who, gets court, uh, who has requested uh, uh, mail-in court supervision. Uh, and if you're approved, uh, we post your payment and uh, no need to come to court anymore. So. And that's a new initiative being offered by the state's attorney's office and our Sangamon County Circuit Clerk's office. It is. Uh, again, hopefully to launch January 1st of, uh, of 2016. Now that doesn't mean that we can't still engage with an attorney. Uh, Absolutely not. And one of the things that, that Ryan was talking about, we've had some experience with people doing mail-in supervision before. Just because you mail in the request and ask for it doesn't mean they're not going to check, like Ryan said. So you send them a check for $240, which is our typical supervision fee. 
and you request supervision. And one of the questions that they ask you, have you had supervision before? And maybe you forget, or maybe you think you can get one by the sensor, as it were, and you tell them no. And lo and behold, they find where you've had supervision before, or maybe twice before, and they deny you supervision. You don't get your $240 back. <laughs> they tend to keep that money, and that's something you need to keep in mind. If you're going to be doing mail-in supervision, be honest when you send in the form. Exactly. So It's always to be honest in all aspects. Of to be form. honest in all aspects, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. And the $240 is always subject to change depending on effective dates that the General Assembly has tacked on new fees that that's add to that $240. By folks who are watching this, may, it might not be $240 when they see this program. It might have by action of the General Assembly increased that's uh, correct. When, they, when they actually have a chance to watch this. So I just wanted to help that be clear to the viewers that are that are watching as well. Uh, this has been an amazingly informative uh, session of Circuit Clerk Presents, uh, and I'm extremely grateful to uh, John Sharp of Sharp and Harmon Law Office here in Springfield, Illinois. John, thank you thank uh, for you. Uh, a very, very informative and factual uh, presentation on supervision, and Ryan Vaughn, uh, the Division Manager of the Sangamon County Circuit Clerk's Office, for his knowledge uh, that he deals with on a daily basis. Uh, and I would also want to thank again uh, the students at the Capital Area Career Center uh, for, their help, for their help in making this program possible. My name's Paul Palazzolo, your Sangamon County Circuit Clerk. It's been a pleasure to bring this edition of Circuit Clerk Presents to you on court supervision. We hope it was informative. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.